I know that you are constantly helping people. I know you've Uh launched successful memberships. Is there something that you see from someone like me that's in a frazzled state, maybe patterns as you're helping people to Mm -hmm. see here's a success path that I think this coming from a frazzled state to unfrazzled, here are some common things and some patterns that I see that most people do these, they're able to move from frazzled into unfrazzled. Sure. Well, as you know, when you start a business, you usually start as a solopreneur and you're doing all of it. You're doing everything. Now, I know when you you started your first, um, but when you and Nathaniel were doing it, you you kind of already had a team built in and that's unusual, but Mm -hmm. most people start off with, Hey, I'm, I just quit my job or I'm starting this new thing and I'm solo and you wear every single hat. And our, our analogy of the office building you know, with, uh, you know, one level being customer service, another floor being like marketing department, another floor might be the accounting department, the other floor be the executive department where the, you know, the boss is up at the top and you're literally running up and down the stairs all day long. And um, that's, can that can get you frazzled pretty quickly. And so you kind of, it, and it's even the same with people who have Amazon businesses. I, I know Jimmy Smith mentioned many times that he and his wife, Brittany, they would hit a ceiling. They, they could not get past a certain number. And it was just because they didn't have any more time. There's only 24 hours in a day and they just could not do any more uh, with the current time that they have and the current restraints that they had. And so they had to hire a team. They had to go to a prep center and do something to hire a shopper, do something different that freed up their time. And so, yes, they're there is that pattern. And it was in my, when our furniture business, I remember it clearly when I was, but at first it's exciting. You're okay running up and down all those stairs, because especially if you just quit and you're, you've just quit your job, it's, you got the freedom that you now can, you know, you decide what stairs you're going to go on and what, at what point. And so you do have that freedom, but fairly quickly, um, I mean, maybe a year or two in, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm getting tired of running up these stairs. I feel like I've just created another job for myself. Yes, it's my own company, but it feels like you've bought yourself another job. And so, yeah, everybody comes, if you, when your business grows, there is a point where you're like, I can't do this anymore. If I'm going to continue to grow, if you're okay, if you're okay there and you enjoy, you're getting, you're in really good shape and you can go up and down all those stairs all the time. Maybe you even build elevators. Um, and now you are just going up and down the elevators and you're still a solopreneur. Some people stay there. But if you want to grow, you've got to go to that next level. And that is usually adding a team. Um, and that doesn't mean like, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of expense. It could be, you know, a virtual assistant. It could be a piece of software that changes the game for you. It could be one little hire or one thing that you outsource that frees up that time that you allows you to go to that next level. And so they're naturally... Every person has a business you're going to, and we think about, I love your analogy of the office building. It's perfect. There's going to be one level of that office building that you really enjoy over the others. And you're like, gosh, I wish I could spend all my time here in this department. Cause that's the one I really enjoy, but I have a business. I have to do all of them in order for this business to run. It's the example of the E-Myth um, book that we talked about before with the cupcake baker, who's really good at making cupcakes. And they, they make awesome cupcakes. Everybody loves them. So they decide they want to start a business. Then they get into business and they realize, oh my gosh, there's so much more to a cupcake business than, than just making really good cupcakes. Now they have all the, you know, the accounting. Marketing, the exactly. Marketing, the marketing, marketing department. Like I didn't sign up for this. I just want to make cupcakes. I know people like them and I want to sell them. That's it. And so um, you, you typically find that there's a certain, certain floor that you really, you enjoy that you're good at. And that's what we would call our, you know, kind of our zone of genius, or at least that's the area we want to spend more time in. But in order to have a business run, you have all those floors that have to be running. And so either you can continue running up and down the stairs, build some elevators to make it faster, or you find people to plug into those floors so that you can kind of just oversee it. Um, and I think uh, and spend more time where was... you want to be spending. Exactly. The unfrazzled state is not necessarily a monetary amount. It's not necessarily Mm -hmm. like once you do this, then you're unfrazzled. It's really up to you and what your passion and desire is. And like you said, you have the choice. You can build this thing and go to the next level if you're uncomfortable in that first level. But if you're in that first level and you've have everything and you're unfrazzled, you can stay there. There's no 
you have to go to this next level. It's up to you to pick where your unfrazzled and your passion is. Mm-hmm. See you guys in the next episode. <laughs>